Hello everyone, in this video we're going to have a fun exercise and model this Borg cube. Think of this as random flows donut tutorial. We're going to use the preset materials that comes with the add-on and modify it to give us these light effects. I'm also going to show you how the partition mesh operator works. Before we start, subdivide the cube to around 4 times to give just enough faces for the partition mesh to work with. The initial effect of partition mesh already works great with the default cube size, so just pick any of the highlighted options to activate it. The partition mesh operator essentially splits the mesh into different objects using random solvers used by random panels and random loop extrude. This way you can use higher subdivision per part compared to what you can if you're dealing with the entire object. This creates more details per object part and avoid freezes if you were to use the same subdivision level on the whole object. Make sure everything's selected. Now let's use random loop extrude for the detail. Use the 3 loop square 80 preset and increase the subdivision carefully. With this resolution, I decided to use 12 subdivision levels. To further increase the detail, you can either increase the subdivision cuts or play around with the loops panel sizes, min and max values. Now all you need to do is select another split object and use the shift plus R hat key to repeat the last action and use the random loop extrude on that mesh. If you need to randomize the seed value, after the repeat action, press the F9 hotkey to show the redo panel and reseed the randomized pattern. Also, if the repeat action fails to activate random loop extrude, just use the operator again manually for the repeat action using Shift plus R to use it again. Here, I'm going to use the pre-select add-on to select some of the panel islands which has less detail than its surroundings and use another layer of random loop extrude on top of them. I will not be doing this for all of them but only a few in areas that I find needs balancing. You can use pre-select's Control shift f hotkey to select a face island but make sure that everything is deselected first using the Control shift a hotkey. Before we proceed to materials, let's first give the separate panel islands or faces its own random shading which can either be flat or smooth. This will show up in render and give a more interesting look to the details compared to them being full flat or smooth shaded. Next is the random vertex color which is going to be our base color where our grunge or dirt effects will be layered on top of. We can now use the app in material operator to add the material presets to the scene. Select all the meshes and use creative flow to assign the Rflow panel hard object material to all of them at once. Let's put our randomized vertex color from before as the starting color and control its intensity using the color ramp node. I'm going to change the grand shaders settings and lessen some of their effects since the model is supposedly a very large object. Thank you. 
Here's another cool trick when using the bevel shader node. If you're having a hard time modifying its effect in the viewport, just go ahead and add a bevel modifier on the mesh and copy the bevel offset you use there as the radius value on the bevel shader node. You can then remove the bevel modifier after this. To merge the split parts from using the partition mesh operator, just select one of the split objects, typically with the pmesh suffix in its name, and use the partition mesh operator again, but this time press Ctrl and click on the operator. This will find the parent split object and fuse all of its children to become a single object again. In this way, I can use the newly merged object as the source mesh for the random cells operator instead of going through all the split objects again. Random cells is just another way to provide additional detail, but you can skip this part if you want. The light actually needs work, it's just not weird enough. So let's add the ambient occlusion node and control its intensity using the color ramp node. We can then break apart the AO lights with the Voronoi texture so it has a more interesting distribution in the entire model.
Let's try our first render. Not bad for a low sample. We just need to fix the light some more. We can create drama with shadows, but don't let it be too dark. Now let's render it with 512 samples just to lessen the impact of the denoiser on the details. So here is our Borg cube. Try to experiment with your own material and lighting to come up with a different look than this one. And that is it for this video. I hope you learned something new this time around. If you like these kind of tutorials and have purchased the tools, be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and share to improve my chances on YouTube's algorithm. If you are interested in the add-ons, you can find the links in the description. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.